Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ron Bettner. I'm a financial advisor with Peaks Integrity Wealth Management, Raymond James. And this is what I call the financial star process. Because most people don't understand that money is just a tool and how we as working class Americans, because that's what I am, I want to educate people. That's really what everything that I talk to my clients and folks like you is all about. It's all about education. And why is that? Let me give you a little background on me. I am a third generation pipe fitter welder and I'm also retired military. So I have been a working class American and surrounded by working class Americans all my life. I have been in the financial industry now going into my ninth year, getting ready to hit my 10th. Well, it'll be at the end of the year. But anyway, I have learned through my nine years of experience that the average working class American doesn't really even understand how money is a tool. It just is something that they make and then they spend. We all know how to make it really well. We all know how to spend it really well. What we're not very educated on is how to make it work to the best of its ability for our needs. Now, how many here have gone to high school and college? What in those educational institutions did they ever teach us about money? Very little. Bingo. <laughs> exactly. And that's and that's why I'm thinking we have got to get the financial literacy up for working class Americans. That's what we've got to start doing, is how to make people smarter. Because we're all gonna go to work. We know how to do that. And we've always thought in our minds, well, if I need more, I gotta work harder. But I believe what we need to start doing is work smarter. Because money is just a tool. When we look at what's going on right now, I think it's imperative right now for all of us to really get a good grasp on what's happening financially in this country and what's happened in the past, what's happening in the present, and what's probably going to be happening in the future. And that's what education's all about. Because I have also noticed that the wealthiest clients that I've ever worked at and you've seen it too, the wealthy people in this country don't go it alone. They surround themselves by a team or with a team. And that's why I have brought a team here. So I have brought myself as a financial advisor. I've also brought an insurance specialist or agent, Trish McKenzie. I also have an attorney Leisha Coltrip, and I have also brought somebody who specializes in taxes. She has an MBA, and that's Sandy Anderson. <clears throat> so this is a two-part program. Today, we're going to be concentrating more on what I'm going to call the goals, protection, and taxes. And then Thursday, we're really going to get into depth on the, the attorney side, or I call it the legacy point of the star. We're going to touch on all points, but we're going to focus more today on the ones that I just mentioned. So thank you for coming. I appreciate you coming. I did write a book called A Blueprint and Financial Guide for the Working Class American. It is available on Amazon, and it's also available on Audible. If you're anything like me, I'm too busy to sit down and read a book half the time, but I can listen while I'm driving. I call that my auto university. <laughs> That's where I like learning. So, does anybody have any questions before I begin? Okay, we'll get right into it. So as I said, I'm a third generation pipe fitter welder. And my dad taught me on the very first leadership job that I had, that if you give a person time, they can do any job on the planet. The time is an acronym, it stands for tools, information, material, and equipment. 
And if you're missing any one of those four elements, it's near impossible to do the job. So how I'm kind of looking at it in the financial realm right now is the tools are actually the education that I have to be able to understand how to make money work as a tool. So I've got that education. The information is gonna be everything that I have available at my fingertips, on my computer, at my office, with all of the product, professionals that I have, the other professionals, that's where I get my information. The material is just money, but money is just a tool. And being, being able to understand how to put that to work for you and your specific needs is the key. And the equipment is my office, my telephone, my computer, and my vehicle, because obviously I travel. My office is up in Westcliff, but I've had an office down here in Pueblo. I still do business down here in Pueblo. Obviously, I'm part of the Latino Chamber and uh, looking forward to doing more. I went ahead and added an R in front of time <laughs> because time is real. The clock only goes one way, folks. And it seems the older we get, the faster it goes. It's all about what are we doing while that clock is ticking. Because it's gonna tick, we wanna make sure that we understand. So I have what I call my R time formula because I wanna understand the people that I'm working with. And the form and formula stands for family. I wanna understand the family dynamic. Occupation is the O. I wanna understand what you do and or did for a living. The next one is recreation. What do you do for fun? Because all work and no play make us dull people. Got to have some fun. And then the final thing is money. But again, money's just a tool. Now we get into the second point of the star, which is budget, income, spending, and taxes. So this is another team member because I always ask my folks that I work with, who are you working with on the tax side? Do you have a professional that you're working with or are you doing it on your own? And a lot of people feel like, because we live in the information age, that they can get online and do it on their own. And a lot of people can. But then the question becomes, are you truly educated and understand everything that's available to you as a working class American and your specific need. The question always becomes, well, how come the wealthy is always so wealthy? Because they have professionals that help them understand their personal situation and how it's going to work best for them. And we're going to get into that just a little bit, or I should say, Sandy's going to get into that here in just a minute. But I do want to go into a little bit more depth and talk about how we as working class Americans don't really do the things that maybe we should. Because money, we make it, and then we spend it. But if we go to a job where you have to crunch numbers, they usually give us a budget, and we better stay within that budget. Because if we overspend, somebody above us, or somebody in the company, is gonna let us know, hey, that's not, we don't have that. What are you doing? Yet we as working class Americans get a little piece of plastic called a credit card and we'll go into debt because we're busy spending. And then we don't really budget for it until we absolutely have to. And then sometimes we get in trouble, which is typical. I mean, that's how the system kind of works. I don't know if you all know this, but the biggest thing that the government has over us as working class Americans is student debt. That's like their biggest income thing. And you can never get rid of it, right? They made laws where you can't even file for bankruptcy to get out of your student debt anymore. That'll last forever and ever, amen. So speaking of what the government likes to do, I do like to bring up the debt clock. Anybody ever seen the U.S. debt clock? It's in the news right now, although they're not showing us the numbers, but they sure are talking about it. What are they talking about? Raising the debt ceiling. We're at $31.8 trillion in debt right now. 
$31.8 trillion in debt. What do they mean by saying, I want to raise the debt ceiling. We've got to raise the debt ceiling to pay our bills. Does anybody understand what that means? Here's a really good example. If you have a credit card and you have maxed out the credit card and you've paid on that credit card the minimum every single time the payment comes in and now you've reached the maximum but you got more spending you got to do you're going to call up the credit card company and you're going to say hey listen i have been making my payments and i know it's been the minimum but i need you to take that 31.8 trillion and take it up to about 40. can you do that oh and i'm going to continue to pay the minimum do you think any credit card company that would deal with us one-on-one -on -one would allow us to take that up, knowing what our past has been. This is what our legislative leaders are continuing to do, and they've been doing it for years. And it doesn't matter if it's Republican, it doesn't matter if it's Democrat, they've all kicked the can down the road because they're more, what I would say, micro-focused on their personal position and not thinking macro or how to truly help this country. <clears throat> now, the $31.8 trillion deficit is a scary number, but that's not the number that scares me. The number that scares me, they hide way down here in the bottom. Let me show you where it's at. As a working class American, the unfunded liability of $187.7 trillion is what freaks me out. Because that is Medicare and Social Security. <coughs> Medicare and Social Security. Are we all expecting to be able to utilize those promises that they have been taking out of our paycheck and if you get a paycheck, you'll see a little four letters that say F-I-C-A. Anybody know what that's for? FICA? It's for Social Security tax paid on income. They take 6.2% of your paycheck and then the employer pays in 6.2% of your paycheck for a total of 12.4% of your paycheck going into this to make sure that we can take advantage of those promises, yet we see that number. Does anybody know what the highest tax rate in this country is right now? 37%. That's the highest tax rate right now. And if you make over $250,000, they're going to throw another 3.8% tax on that. So you're going to be just over 40%. And this doesn't matter if you make over $250,000 or $2.5 million a year as income. That's your highest tax rate. Does anybody know what the highest tax rate in this country, what it was and when it was? It was in 1944, it was just after World War II, and it was 94%. That means when Ronald Reagan was making movies, he would only make two movies a year, because he made $100,000 a picture in 1944. If he made that third movie, $94,000 was going to Uncle Sam. Guess who got the other 6,000? state of California, he'd have been working for free. Now, it's my opinion, but I believe that's probably what drove that man into politics, because he had to live through that. But what I want you to think about is, wait a minute, Ron, 1944, $200,000 a year, what is that? That's $3.8 million a year today. That is not us, that is not the working class American. So then the question became then, what was the lowest tax rate at that time? It was 23%. And you had to make less than $2,000 for the entire year to be in that, which is probably somewhere around 12 to maybe $16,000 today. 
This is stuff that I want people getting educated on. The working class American, we are the least educated when it comes to money and money matters. And when we start seeing these numbers and start understanding how it's going to affect us today and tomorrow, when you look at these numbers, where do you think taxes are going, folks? Are they going up or are they going down? Probably going up, right? I mean, the working class American has been the backbone of this country since the Boston Tea Party. They tax us. So what I want everybody to start understanding is where are we going in this country when it comes to our taxes. All right. So one of the things that I am trying to get people aware of, and there is a film out there and a book called The Power of Zero. And really what The Power of Zero is about, it's about getting into a 0% tax bracket if possible. But the only way that we can do that is if we understand the taxes. And that's, again, where the professional comes in. But what I want to do is just show a quick trailer of this movie. We did present this movie about a month and a half ago at the theaters here in Pueblo. And just take a quick peek at this. The truth is the federal government has lost control of the budget. Instead of paying for all the new initiatives, whether they're tax cuts, spending increases, all sorts of things that we like, the government's just putting it all on the national credit card. And as a result, our national debt is just going up and up and up. And it's growing faster than the economy. And that's when you know you have a real problem. Everything is going to be squeezed out of the budget. There won't be anything left. The road we are on is a perilous one that ultimately leads to the bankrupting of our country. So we have a crisis on our hands. All Congress has to do for this whole situation to come to a head is nothing. Because every year that they do nothing makes the problem even more unsolvable. We don't seem to have the ability to get along and, and find common ground. Is the government trying to trick you right now? And the answer is very simply yes. So why is this being swept under the rug? Why is nobody talking about it? Probably because it's not popular. So I've actually been traveling around the country for about four years now, taking the power of zero message to different groups. When you cut taxes on current generations, you are simultaneously raising them on future generations. It is all driven by spending. Once we have spent a dollar, We've already decided to tax it. The only question is whether we tax it now or we borrow it now and tax it uh, in the future. So to make up for the liabilities that we're incurring with all the promises we've made in social insurance programs, we're going to have to increase substantially the tax rate and perhaps even double it. Now precisely how high it's going to be, you know, there's a lot of room to debate. People will have to pay more taxes. <laughs> People's retirement savings are at risk of future higher taxes. Well, qualified plans really do two things. They defer the tax and the tax calculation. Now let that run past your brain real slow. I'm driven by trying to help as many people as I can avoid this disaster that's going to come up in retirement when taxes go up and the market goes down. What are these people going to do if they haven't planned ahead of time? Anybody gets a chance to see that film? The debt clock was at 20 trillion five years ago when this film came out. And we just looked at it at 31.8. In five years, that's what it's done. This is part of getting that education and understanding what's going on and how is it going to affect each and every single one of us. When you listen to our retirement, when I asked how many of us have got an education on money, none of us have really gotten an education. The school system, the educational system, doesn't teach us about how money is a tool and how it can work for us. Yet, they've put one of the most important things in our lives 
in the least educated hands, and that's our retirement. That's when we are gonna be either too old or we can't work anymore to make a living. Yet, we're supposed to figure it out. And then we wonder why is it that this country is heading towards a socialistic type system because we are not going to be prepared for what's coming down the pipe. And that's what, I mean, we just got to get educated. If we can start at the grassroots level and educate ourselves and become self-sustainable because we're smart on our money, we know how to put it to work, we know how to make it work to the best of its ability for who we are and what our needs are, the government can go ahead and double taxes, as they said in that film. Because if we can be in the 0% tax bracket by working with a tax professional, then that's what we want to do. Now I'm going to do this right, I'm sure. Come here. Yay. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Miss Sandy Anderson for a little bit because she is the tax professional and she's got some really good examples on some things when it comes to retirement planning, some options that are there, and I can get into more depth on that, but I'm gonna go ahead and let her talk about the importance of working with a tax professional to understand taxable incomes. All right, guys, so after that, I don't know how many of you are trusting on retiring with Social Security. <laughs> I don't know how, um, how much you're gonna rely on that in the future, but I wouldn't. So there are different types of retirement vehicles that you can use and starting earlier the better um, to be able to plan for the future for when you retire. There are two different types of vehicles. There's tax deferred and tax now. Tax deferred are those traditional IRAs and 401ks and it's just as the name states. You don't pay the taxes until you pull it out later. Um, paying taxes now, those are the Roth IRAs, where you take your after-tax income and put that into um, an investment vehicle and save that until you're of the age to pull that out for retirement. Now, our firm specializes in tax planning for businesses, contract laborers, individuals. Uh, we do audits of nonprofits and governmental entities who have those 401ks, who have para-retirement accounts. And, I can't stress enough how imperative it is to go to a tax professional before taxes are due and give them a little history about what your tax situation looks like. And I have three real life examples of what our firm kind of dealt with when it came to, to, to traditional IRAs and uh, Roth IRAs. And these are your two basic vehicles that you can choose to use. So traditional IRA, that is when um, you pay taxes later. So what I'm going to use are an example of that, and it's going to be married filing jointly, and it's gonna be in the 24% tax bracket. Now this is gonna be your basic formula for how taxes are calculated. You have your income adjustments, standard deduction, what your tax comes out to. These are gonna be your federal withholding payments, what comes out of your W-2 or what you pay in during the year and that'll come out to what your taxes do. So this is an example of somebody who came to a tax professional before taxes were due and said, hey, this is my income. We got a married filing jointly couple who had gross income of $215,000. Their standard deduction is going to be 25.9. And they withheld, let's see, 31,135. Total tax, 33,055. And so they actually owe after that $1,920. So this is kind of like a typical scenario where we look at the taxes after you know we get all their W-2s, all their 1099s, we get a picture of what their taxes are looking like. So we tell them, hey, you have an option of making an adjustment here 
where each of you can put in the maximum IRA contribution of $6,000. Now remember that this is tax later. So this adjustment line right here is gonna be $12,000 in this second scenario with everything else being the same. So this will reduce their taxable income um, to $30,196. And the payments being same here. They're actually going to get a refund. Of $939. Now this is a typical type of tax planning that people would do saying hey do I owe at the end of the year if I do I want to defer by putting money into my IRA and what you can do is you know whatever type of investment vehicle you would see an advisor for this I would highly recommend a financial advisor would designate these funds to uh, the year 2022, the year of the taxes, even if it's in 23, um, and defer this tax for you. Now remember, this will be taxed later. And I have another example of that where it can be adverse. So this is a very scary situation that we saw a lot of during 2022. And it, I don't know how much you, you guys kind of watch stocks or how the market fluctuates, but 2020 through 2022 was a very volatile period where stocks were fluctuating at, you know, by tens of percent, 50%. So a lot of people who were in their retirement age, they were seeing their traditional IRAs in these investment vehicles where they're reliant on the stock market for their value of what their reti retirement account is. Now this is a real life story. So we had an individual who made $120,000, let me do a different color, you can see better. They had a bit of rents, a couple rental, Homes, you know they had a they're pretty good they're of retirement age um, well actually we'll just use the same we'll just use my standard deduction for the same that they require them jointly Let's see 12 382 was their tax they withheld 12,000 and they owed 382 dollars that's actually not bad that means you're not lending any money to the federal government with no interest. So that's pretty good. What happened was this individual saw the market fluctuations in their IRA account. What they did, and I can't believe they did this. What they did was they pulled an extra $500,000 out of their IRA. Because it was sitting at seven hundred thousand, it dropped to two hundred thousand dollars. She panicked, pulled everything out. This is a traditional IRA. It means it's tax deferred. So she added an extra five hundred thousand dollars to her taxable income, and this is a real story. So she now owes one hundred and fifty-six thousand six hundred seventy-three dollars in taxes. <coughs> And actually there was a little bit of tacked on penalties there as well for underpayment. Oh, actually the underpayment, because there is an underpayment penalty guys, I don't know if you know that for your contract laborers, she had an underpayment penalty of 3,166 added to this. That brought her tax liability, no more refund, to 97,839. So this is kind of what a tax deferred vehicle will do to you if you don't go to an advisor. <laughs> so she jumped to the 35% tax bracket before she was in the 22%. So this is a fine example of why you should talk to both an investment advisor and also um, a tax professional in a situation like this. One more example I have is a Roth. Roth is when you pay taxes now, 
And if you guys were listening earlier, we're kind of uh, at a pace where taxes are going to be higher in the future. So a Roth kind of seems more uh, enticing after, after today's speech. But basically, we live in Southern Colorado. So we see a lot of farmers and ranchers and that type of, you know, contract labor type individuals. So what happens is Colorado has been experiencing severe droughts. So we have this individual farmer who actually had negative income. Negative $60,000. Drought hit, fire happened, he lost all of his crops put in all this feed, put in all supplies, fertilizer, spent all this money, lost equipment, lost all of his revenue because he couldn't sell any crops, was at a loss this year. Standard deduction, we will use the same. So he's at a total loss of 85.9. This is an individual who came to a tax professional, even if you don't have money, he came to a tax professional. We did projections for him. So his tax, everything is zero. He has, he put nothing in. What happened was we said, hey, you have 85.9 here of loss. You're at a 0% tax bracket. Why don't we pull out 85.9 out of your IRA and convert it to a Roth, pay the taxes now. So 85.9 with the standard deduction and all of that, 85.9 cancels out. He's still at 0%. He paid zero taxes on this 85.9. The power of zero. This is the zero tax bracket here. That's where we're trying to get to. So those are three examples of, you know, kind of like a, what a traditional IRA does, how a traditional IRA can hurt you, and how you could use the knowledge of how to pay taxes now versus later to help you in a specific tax situation, even if you have no money. No money at all, this guy did his tax planning. He was already in a 0% tax bracket, but he took advantage of that knowledge of how to use these different types of retirement vehicles. Here we go. Right. Does anybody have any questions for Sandy? Sandy, thank you for doing that. That's like the <clears throat> most amazing example I've seen of, of those. The scary part is that these are real examples. Very real. And not just one, multiple. Especially the person pulling out of their IRA. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And it, is, and it is kind of funny because people will sometimes talk to a professional and then they think they can do it on their own. Because I've got kind of an example, almost the same thing, about a Roth conversion. And I show people the information, share it with them and say, you know, you can convert money from a traditional IRA to a Roth. But remember, you still got to pay tax on it. This example we see that this guy was negative 85,900, which means he got to convert that amount over because it was a wash. He was already in the 0% tax bracket. He could take 85,900, put it over into the Roth, and didn't pay not one red cent in taxes because he worked with a professional who understood how the process worked. But the gentleman I talked to, I said, hey, you know, we can start moving things over because it goes back to this. Do you want to pay tax on the seed or do you want to plant that seed, cultivate it, water it, grow it, and now you've got 10 ears of corn that you get to pay tax on? <clears throat> Rather pay tax on the seed or the harvest is the question. And when we start looking at the numbers that are there, we start looking at what's going on, the government really would like us to pay tax on the harvest because they get more tax money. Does anybody know what the SECURE Act is? Came out in 2019 and then they just updated it in the last week of December, just before Christmas or just after Christmas, just before New Year, they updated it. So the SECURE Act is this. 
this is um, where you're looking at, if you have a traditional IRA and a non-spouse inherits it, you're actually going to get taxed at a higher rate as that person, or I'm going to say kids, usually inherit that. They got to pay the taxable income rate on that money. So if it sends them into a new tax bracket, they're paying high taxes on the income that they're receiving from the traditional IRA that they inherited, and it has to be depleted in 10 years, plus their income is getting taxed at a higher rate as well. So these are, these are things to think about. Any questions? Uh, yeah, I don't understand why a standard deduction even applies if there has been no income. Why, it's like the government is guaranteeing you that much money just because you're a citizen or something? If you have no income, why do you get to deduct something? Well, in his case, it's zero. It's just a zero <coughs> in, in this case. But we added the standard deduction here to see how much income we can take in this scenario. The, so, uh, yeah. Out of the Roth. Um, uh, out of the, yeah, traditional, the traditional IRA. Mm -hmm. So here, um, if you have negative income, it doesn't go below zero. But it makes it look like they're entitled to that much more money. Yeah. So it's, what it, it, it's the way the government put the system, because they have standard deductions as well as child tax credits. Well, if you don't have a child, you can't get that child deduction. Exactly. But you still get the tax credit. It's just part of the system that they built, right? Remember, these lawmakers make laws because they're trying to get as much tax money as they possibly can because they got a country to run. But we see they're still not doing it very well. Yet they're still allowing us as working class Americans to have these, I'm, I'm going to call it. Perks? Yeah, if you, if, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's kind of like throw me a bone, right? <laughs> and, and that's really what, what it is. It's, it's kind of a, mm. a bone, if you will. Um, I do have budget worksheets on the back side of those watermarked pages. <clears throat> I do talk about risk and how we go through some things there, but we're gonna keep moving, keep moving into goals. This gets into the retirement goals. So this gets into exactly what Sandy was talking about. We have traditional IRA and a Roth IRA. You have contribution limits and ages. So if you're under 50 years old, you can put six, $6,500 a year in right now underneath the traditional IRA. If it's a 401k, you can do up to like $23,000 and put it under there. But remember, that means it's tax deferred. You won't pay tax on it now, you'll pay tax on it later. Then when you turn, part of the Secure Act, when you turn 73 years old, if you've got money piled up under here, the government says, hey, we're gonna look at that account value from last year on December 31st. We're gonna give it a number based on your age and life expectancy so at 73 that number is 26.5 they'll divide 26.5 into whatever your total amount is and that is what's called a required minimum distribution if you do not take that the government can penalize you it used to be 50 percent now it's like 25 percent and they have this scaling thing that i'm not even going to go into right now but that's where the tax professional can make sure you're doing what needs to be done. Now we're going to jump right into protection. So I'm going to let Trish talk a little bit about the protection point of the star. And I'm going to jump in every now and then with her. So, hi. Thank you for being here. Um, so protection. What is protection? Well... We protect our cars with insurance. We protect our houses with insurance because they're a big value asset. Agreed? Agreed. Mm -hmm. Well, we also <coughs> want to protect our lives. Now, I prided myself on keeping myself healthy every day so that I wouldn't be a burden to my children. And I turned a blind eye to this 
So now I can still be a burden to my children financially. <laughs> so I'm playing catch up. And like your mother used to tell you, do what I say, not what I do. Well, that's what I'm asking you to do. I didn't do this, but I want you to, because I know what it's like to be here. So in protection, we want to protect your life. And I know growing up, my folks made money, but they just spent it. So there was no, no value there. And we were told that get, get uh, death benefit, benefit, term life insurance. And so what good was that? You didn't, nobody got anything until you died. <laughs> was that good? That didn't help you any, right? <laughs> so now there are life insurance vehicles that can protect you into your old age, can provide an income for you into your old age, can take care of you when you need assistance to live. Or if you get chronic illness, these life insurance products can have money there for you. That's why it's important to add, to get into a program where you save a little money each month and build it up so that when you retire, you have an additional income, not just Social Security. So when we talk about protecting life, health, and wealth, life is very self-explanatory. But health is another deal. Does anybody know what the six activities of daily living are? Here's how I remember them, because we all do this. And what I want people to realize is insurance products are not what they used to be. Annuities and life insurance, you can actually preserve wealth today. But these are the six activities of daily living. If you go through your daily routine, when you wake up in the morning, you can transfer your own body out of bed. Nobody has to lift you out of that bed, put you in a chair and wheel you around. The next thing you do is you go to the bathroom all by yourself. Nobody's got to take you there. I know that I have to jump in the shower and bathe before I go to the office. And then I can do my toiletries, brush my teeth, comb what little hair I have, put on deodorant. Then I can dress myself and then I can feed myself. If you can't do two of those six things, you need help. And that usually costs money or somebody big and burly to be able to take care of you. And most of us don't have that. And that's what we want people to understand there is life insurance products out there that can protect your life, but it can also, you get to use the death benefit for your care if you need it. You don't have to die to actually leverage that money and be able to use it. And I think that's key. Now, protecting wealth, there are products out there where you can be involved with the market, but I don't really espouse to that. Because if you're putting money in something, you're trying to protect your life and your health with, why would you want the value going down? So this gets into what's called an IUL or an index universal life product, where you can literally, if the market goes up, you'll go up with the market. On your anniversary, that locks in and that becomes your new floor. So you literally make more money in these products by losing less. That's what I like being able to point out to folks We've got risk factors that we have to think about. Longevity risk is greater now than it ever has been before because we're all smarter. I know when I was growing up, I watched my parents, my uncle, my aunt, my grandparents, everybody is smoking, drinking, having a good old time. But we know what that does to the body now. We're smarter. I know my kids don't. Even when I was growing up, nobody was wearing a seatbelt. And we could be a kid hanging onto the dashboard looking at the windshield, right? That doesn't happen anymore. We're smarter. Statistically, 49% of anybody over 65 years old is going to need some care, a long-term care. And it doesn't mean it's going to last forever and ever, amen. It could be just for a few weeks. It could even be for a few months. And sometimes long-term care means it'll last the rest of your life. But statistically, 49% of us are going to need something. And I'm sorry, ladies, you're probably going to need it more than us men because us men just up and die. You guys hang around. We've got longevity risk. That is the risk that taxes are going to change. Or I'm sorry, legislative risk. Taxes are going to change or laws are going to change. Longevity risk and market risk, which we've talked about. 
I'm not going to get into these right now because I want to get over into legacy and what legacy really means when it comes to an attorney. So, Alicia, I'm going to sure. turn this over to you because legal documents in Colorado, I think, are imperative. They are. What I've learned is that if you don't have a plan in Colorado, Colorado has a plan for you. If you don't have an estate plan, the state will tell you what's going to happen to your assets when you die. Um, I'll give you two examples. My, my grandmother on my dad's side died in Ohio. She was on Medicaid, on Medicare, had $2,000 to her name. Her personal administrator, my aunt, gave everybody $325 and it was done. My grandma on my mom's side died in Texas. Not many more assets, but she owned a house in Texas and a house in Colorado. And they've been in probate for 16 years. They cannot get it resolved. 16 years. And that's the quickest way to evaporate everything you've worked for, everything you've saved for, everything you wanted to go to your kids, is to have your family fighting over it for, for decades. Um, in Colorado, if you don't have a will um, or a trust, um, the state of Colorado will put you into probate. And most people don't know anybody can apply to be your executor, even a creditor. Imagine Visa coming in and opening your probate estate charging your family, selling your home, paying themselves to do the work over a credit card bill, paying themselves far more than you ever owed them to begin with. Um, we set people up with a will um, or a trust, something to at least set out who you want to be your executor, who you want to manage your assets. Um, their job is to gather the debts, gather the assets, pay it off, and then distribute to your family. Um, we do powers of attorney. As you've heard a little bit about today, if you can't make a decision for yourself, if your health is compromised or your mental capacity is compromised due to an accident, due to an injury, um, there are long drawn out court battles called guardianship and conservatorship proceedings. Um, that's where your family or your um, business partners even, um, people can fight over who gets to make those decisions for you. If you have a power of attorney, you get to decide now. If I can't speak for myself, I want my son, I want my husband, I want my sister, I want someone to make this decision for me medically. Um, if it's a general power, you say, I want this person to manage my business for me. I want only these two people. You can have co-agents on to determine my bank accounts, to determine my house, to be able to sell my home or transfer my deed. Um, the, the power is in you making the decision now so that your family is not left with um, the, who is going to do this, how long is the fight going to last, what is the court going to do. Um, it's unpredictable, and um, I don't think anyone wants to be in that situation. Um, powers of attorney are when you're living. Um, wills and, and most trusts are when you've passed away. Um, the last thing we do is called an advanced directive for our clients. This is a way to be more specific with your medical care. You can say um, in a situation of terminal illness, um, or persistent vegetative state like a coma, um, how you want to be cared for. Do you want to have artificial nutrition, hydration? Do you want to be on a feeding tube? Do you want to have a ventilator? Um, you can set out you know, how many days you want that to last, or you can say no machines or indefinite. But again, it's a way for you to decide what do you want um, and give your heirs some direction on what to do for you. So they're not locked in a court battle, so they stay out of court, out of conflict. They can focus on each other um, and, and getting through whatever the loss is. Um, I can go into this in more detail next time, uh, next time on Thursday, but just as an overview, that's what we try to do for our clients because we want you to decide what happens, um, not the court and not some random creditor or other individual. Does anybody have any questions for Alicia? So what I want everybody to understand, this is part of the team, right? We need professionals that understand the laws what's going on right now, and understand who you are and what your needs are right now. Can they change? Absolutely. But you keep the team with you. Even if you change some of the team players, you still want the key players around you no matter what stage of life you're going to be in. Again, the government has put one of the biggest, most important responsibilities in the hands of the least educated in it, and that's our retirement, right? Because the clock is can, it's just going to keep ticking. There's nothing we can do about it. It's all about what do we do while it's ticking. Again, I am just going to stress, the professionals are your key. You'll never be able to go in on the internet and do everything that you've heard today on your own. And do it well. 
You can probably figure out some things, but it's like I put in my book. There's a cost and value to everything. If the cost and value is equal or the value is greater, it sounds like money well spent. It's when the cost is here and the value is down here, especially when it needs to be in place and done right. Man, that money, that was not money well spent. And that's what I'm really trying to get people to understand. The key is the team and getting educated. If we have a toothache, we don't get online and try and figure out how to fill the tooth. We go to a professional. It's the same thing with money. Money's just a tool, folks. Legacy to me, it's not just about the legal documents, but it's what are we teaching our children? Think about what we got taught about money. No, go work hard and put it in the bank, right? And the bank uses the heck out of that money. I don't know if you guys know this, but for every $100 that gets deposited in the bank, they get a loan out of $1,000. The government allows them to loan out $1,000 for every $100 that you deposit, and then we wonder why they're in trouble. And then who's going to bail them out? Well, the government bails them out because the Fed prints money. We look at this debt. I mean, it's, it, you start putting the puzzle pieces together and we are the Ponzi players for the Ponzi scheme. And we've got to start thinking that we need to be a financial star. We need to understand that our money is a tool and it needs to be used for our good. We're the ones making it. We need to put it to work. I did write a book about all of this. It's called A Blueprint and Financial Guide for the Working Class American. It is available on Amazon. It's also available on Audible for an audio book. Thank you again for coming. Thursday, we're going to get into more in-depth on the legacy side. We will not have the pleasure of having Sandy here on Thursday, mm -hmm. but we're still going to go into some of the tax. We will use her examples if she's gracious enough to allow us to do that which she says she is, so thank you. But we're, I really think it's important that we have the professionals here answering the questions. Does anybody have any final questions? Thank you again for coming. I hope to see more people on Thursday. Talk to those you care about that need to understand money is just a tool. We don't charge anything to talk. Thank you.